You hear that? You hear? It is time for another watch party. Cobra Kai Season 2, the teaser trailer has dropped, and if there was any doubt, we know right up front, Season 2 will be kick-ass just like the first season. How do we know this? Well, it told us. Cobra Kai is about being badass. badass. And with that, so much to get into and explore. Let's take a look. The trailer makes clear Season 2 will be picking up right where Season 1 left off. There are now two karate dojos in the valley in direct competition, Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do Dojo. I'm really looking forward uh, to how this plays out over the season. Uh, one of the nice things about this show is it does show... Uh, some of the real sides, like the business side of it, you have to attract customers. Uh, the trailer shows us right at the beginning, uh, we see Daniel's uh, business strategy, uh, which is basically he's leveraging his wealth from the car dealership uh, to just give karate away from free. So he's hoping to steal away the customers and the students from Johnny just by giving it all away for free. Uh, this is an interesting tactic uh, that I want to actually go into just a little bit here. Karate Kid has always addressed the rich versus poor dynamic. Daniel was from the working class family. Johnny was from the wealthy part of town. Cobra Kai, of course, flipped that on its head where then Johnny was the poor working class and Daniel was the wealthy. Uh, what's great about season two is it looks like we're going to now see that dynamic played out in terms of business owner. It's a lot easier for a business owner to just go in, give things away for free. Daniel can afford to do that. Johnny, on the other hand, does have to charge his students. He's got to charge them every day or whatever deal he offers, but he needs to make his money. So it gives Daniel the advantage. I think one of the twists of this season will be that Daniel actually has trouble attracting students to his Miyagi Do Dojo, even though he's giving everything away for free. There's an interesting quirk of human psychology that shows that when somebody's paying for something, they're far more likely to be dedicated to it. So even if Johnny has fewer students, because his students have to pay $80, $100 a month, whatever it would cost. They're far more likely to be dedicated because they're putting their money towards it too. The way I see Daniel's Dojo working, certainly in real life, is you attract a lot of students. They come a few times for a few weeks. Uh, they drop out, then they don't come for a month, then they show up for two lessons, uh, then they quit entirely. That's kind of how the way people work when they're getting something for free. They're not really committed to it. Uh, they're not really dedicated. Um, the trailer, it looks like, you know, his daughter and Robbie will be probably be his two main students. Everyone else is kind of drifters in and out. Now, conversely, Johnny's business strategy is going to be to stick with what they do best to show everyone that Cobra Kai is about being badass. They're going to have a demo squad with a lot of board-breaking acrobatics, showing off sort of the flair and coolness of the karate. We see what's definitely going to be a major scene at some sort of talent show, a major school or city event, uh, where the Cobra Kai demo squad is there showing off the best of it, it definitely looks like a huge scene. I suspect this scene is probably going to come sometime in the middle or uh, second half of the season. It'll probably be uh, the moment where Cobra Kai 
sort of reclaims its mantle from the Miyagi Do Dojo. Uh, the free lessons aren't working. Cobra Kai shows its badass. It gets the people excited. I think that's going to be a turning point in the season where uh, Cobra Kai comes back into power. Now, the big return for season two will be Martin Cove as Sensei Kreese, as was hinted, of course, at the very end of the first season. Unfortunately, the trailer doesn't really show much of Kreese and what will, his character will be in season two. It does appear that he and Johnny have a reconciliation. Uh, I'm predicting. Uh, John Kreese will be sort of a second sensei of Cobra Kai, maybe taking on different classes, other students. Uh, we do see what appears to be maybe a training session in the woods with Kreese. Now, one thing Cobra Kai did do is it always added more context, showed uh, the story from a different viewpoint, especially with Johnny Lawrence in season one. And the producers have essentially hinted that they were going to do the same with Crease for season two. My theory uh, for the story for Crease is the his whole uh, philosophy and way for being with Cobra Kai, strike first, strike hard, no mercy, would be something he probably developed in Vietnam. I think uh, the Vietnam part of his backstory is going to be played into more. It can explain a little bit of the character, why he's like that, why he doesn't want to accept any defeat. Perhaps uh, it had to deal with a fight he got into Vietnam, where maybe some of his fellow soldiers were killed or something. It makes sense. It reflects his character, the whole baby boomer generation in the Vietnam War, and could provide an interesting back point and alternate view for his character and why he acted the way he did. The one new new character to the show will be a girl named Tori, played by Peyton List. We don't know very much at this time about uh, Tori. All we know is she's a troubled teen new to the valley. My prediction is she may have some sort of relationship with Kreese, his granddaughter or something. It's not really clear. The reason I think Tori is related to Kreese is partially because it looks like she shows up already knowing some karate. If you look at this scene in the trailer right here, you can see she's taking down Miguel, and she's actually wearing her street clothes. I think this is her first time in the Cobra Kai dojo, but she already has some skills and can actually already take out Miguel, at least to some extent. Tori will be sort of the counterpoint to Sam in this season, sort of the girl opposite, the girl bully to Sam. How this will go out, I don't really know. It's possible uh, she may get in a relationship with Miguel. We don't see this in the trailer, but it would make sense, and that could inspire jealousy in Sam. I do believe Tori is supposed to represent the pretty sexy karate fighter. You can see, if you look real closely in this shot, she's actually wearing nail polish on the Cobra Kai floor or in this shot you can see those jeans those jeans are not meant for karate training they're meant to look good this is as opposed to sam whose focus is only on the karate only on the training as per the miyagi do way i can see that playing off on her with some negative effects in the high school and thing, which is also the running theme of the show. So I do expect season two to be easily as strong as the first season. Everyone was shocked how strong this show came out of the gate in that first season. Part of what made the show's first season such a success was its ability to tap into 
uh, an undercurrent that's been sort of flowing through the country and culture. For the past many years, uh, the entire country has been inundated with uh, nonstop messaging and programming and propaganda that sort of sounds like this. And as I look around this arena, I pray for every race, religion, and gender that we can all live together in peace. Please join me in a moment of silence as we strive to end intolerance in our time. And no one really ever expected it to be 80s bad boy Johnny Lawrence who stood up and spoke for all of America when he said, Kick that pansy bitch in the face. Out of obscurity, a true hero emerges. I'm really excited for season two. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe. We're a new channel trying to build up. Follow us on Twitter. Also, if you got a minute, check out our sponsor, Gravity Bakery. Great cookies, brownies, candy for all sorts of watch parties. It tastes so good, it'll pull you in. See you soon.